Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice homemade radical equation. I call these equations homemade because I kind of came up with the idea, but I can also talk about how to come up with these kinds of equations because I've made uh, quite a few of those. Check out uh, the other problems on my channel. I also have another channel where I focus on complex numbers, which includes some lecture videos as well. So go ahead and check out A plus BI as well. So to be able to solve this problem, we're going to be using two methods. So I'll be presenting two ways to do it. The first method is usually the more painful brute force -y method. That's how I usually design it. Stick towards the end so you can get to see both methods. So first method is basically going to be just getting rid of the radicals because why not? If you square both sides, the outer radical is going to disappear because we have the square root of 1 plus 1 over the square root of 1 plus 1 over x. And the whole thing is equal to x. So if you square both sides, the outer radical is going to disappear. And this left hand side is going to equal x squared. Right? So our goal is going to be the get, getting rid of the radical one more time. But let's not do it right away. Because we have some stuff to simplify. Let's go ahead and uh, isolate this as much as possible. Subtract 1. That'll give me x squared minus 1. And then notice that these can be interchanged because they're being multiplied, right? You could also multiply both sides by a radical and then divide by that, but that's too much work. In other words, we can write this as 1 over x squared minus 1 equals the square root of 1 plus 1 over x. You have to be careful here. x should not be 0. I guess that was the very first requirement. x cannot be 0 x cannot be negative 1 because that would make this 0, right? And then x should not equal what else? Hmm. x should not be 1 either because notice that we ended up with x squared minus 1. But what would happen if x was 1 in the very original equation? Think about it. You can just substitute. I think x equals 1 is going to be okay uh, in the original one, but after we modify the problem, so, you know, we've got to be careful. If you plug in x equals 1, just for te uh, testing purposes, 1 plus 1 over, this is going to be 1 plus 1, so it's going to be the square root of 1, um, square root of 2, and obviously this is not equal to 1. So x equals 1 is not a solution, but uh, we excluded it, so we're good. We don't have to exclude it because we know it's not going to come up. So z x can't be 0, x can't be negative 1. Those are going to be good for us. Now, how do we solve this equation? Square both sides. Right? That's what we do for radicals all the time. Great. So when we square both sides, we're going to get the radical. Let me switch sides here. I'll get rid of the radical. So I'm going to end up with 1 plus 1 over x. And then this will just be 1 over x squared minus 1 quantity squared. Let's go ahead and make a common denominator. And then guess what we're going to do next? Cross multiplication. Right? So we, we're going to multiply this by that and it'll equal x. Nice. So can we really make this factorable or something? Like, can we find a common factor? Probably not. I, at least I don't see right away. But uh, this will give me a quintic. Uh-oh, quintics are not good. x to the fourth minus, minus 2x squared plus 1 multiply by x plus 1 equals x. And then we're going to go ahead and distribute x to the, oops, x to the fifth plus x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus 1 equals x. x is going to cancel out. Good. We're going to end up with 0, but we still have a constant. So let's rewrite this equation. x to the fifth plus x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 2x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. I don't think there's a way to factor it, even though I could be wrong. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but looks like this is not easily factorable. And it's a quintic, so the unfortunate side is that there's no quintic formula. So we can't really solve it. Except with uh, we could use the, what's it called? Rational root theorem. I usually refer to it as RRT. Which means if there are any rational solutions, because it's um, monic, uh, the solutions must be factors of 1. Factors of 1, it can only be 1 or negative 1. Well, 1 is not going to be a solution, is it? I don't think so, because if you replace x with 1, 1 plus 1 minus 2 minus 2 plus 1, 
this is gonna give us one plus one equals two. At the end up, at the end, you're not gonna get a zero. And negative one is not gonna work either, is it? Let's test it out. You never know. Negative one plus one plus two minus two plus one. These two cancel out, these two cancel out. Again, we end up with non-zero. So those are our solutions, but those were the only, only candidates. So what are we gonna do? We're stuck. Good luck solving this quintic by any method you like. Some people say, oh, quintics, there's a quintic formula, blah, blah, so on and so forth. They can't be expressed. Okay, let's accept it. There is no quintic formula, period. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because I think the second method is fun and that's what was intended. When I kind of thought about this problem, okay, this is what I want people to think about, okay? So hopefully you get to see my thinking, how I came up with a problem like this. Hopefully we can talk about that too. So if you look at this expression carefully, you're gonna realize that this pattern is repeated. What do I mean by that? So you take the variable x, you find it's reciprocal, you add one to it and then square root it. You take this, you find it's reciprocal, you add one to it and then square root it. And that gives you x. Wait, what? What is that supposed to mean? Okay, let me make this more clear by using substitution. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this y. Don't ask why, because you could also use u, right? You could use u, not yourself, just u. So this gives us the following. First of all, square root of one plus one over x becomes y, nice. And then from this assumption, the square root of one plus one over y becomes x. Uh-oh, interesting. From an equation in a single variable, we got a system of equations in two variables. Why are we trying to make it complicated? No, not really. This actually simplifies things. Why? Because this is a really, really nice system. Are you serious? Uh, probably. Let's find out. So I'm gonna go ahead and simplify this. Let's make a common denominator, write it this way, okay? and write the other one the same way. Great, oops, that's supposed to be, wait, why did I put y and x for that? Of course, that's the way it's supposed to be, right? It's the other way around, cool, cool. Now, we could probably do the following. Uh, isolate square root of x plus one, it becomes y square root of x, and then this becomes x square root of y. Okay, so where do we go from here? I could probably subtract, but I'm not exactly sure if it's gonna work because this looks like it's not gonna work. I was hoping to get something nice out of this, but let me tell you, here's what it is. Notice that X and Y are doing the same thing. So here's my thinking. Y equals X will work because if you replace Y with X here and Y with X here, you'll get the same equation. So that'll be consistent and we'll have a solution. Nice. So Y equals X, I don't know, I couldn't get it, but I know that y equals x is a possibility, it works, so I'm gonna use that. So since this was equal to y, I'm gonna set that equal to x because y equals x is gonna give us a solution. So where do we go from here? The rest is easy, square both sides, and then you're gonna you know, multiply everything by x, and then solve this equation. But again, this is cubic, but guess what? This is a reduced cubic, so, I mean, depress cubic, I should say. There's no x squared. So you could easily solve it by using the identity or the cubic formula, which is this one. Think about it. So you can basically do it as follows. You can set this equal to x, and then the coefficient of x is negative three ab, which is negative one, so ab is gonna be one third, and the constant term is gonna be one, so a cubed plus b cubed is gonna be one. You can cube both sides, a cubed, b cubed is equal to one over 27. And then you can isolate b cubed, write it as one minus a cubed, and then substitute here, tada, power of algebra. And then you're gonna get, uh, get an equation like this, a cubed minus a to the six equals one over 27. And then do the substitution, a cubed equals c, then you'll get t squared, what, t, are you serious? I mean c, c squared minus c plus one over 27 equals zero, as you can see, this is quadratic, solve for C, cube root it, there's gonna be two answers. One of them is gonna be A, the other one's gonna be B. Add them, you'll get X. Uh-oh, that's too much work. Why don't I just show you the graph first? There is a single solution and the solution 
both in approximate and exact form. Thank you, Wolfram Alpha. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. By the way, the other solutions are complex. Bye-bye.